Hey there, and welcome to the latest episode of Mobile Wallet Marketing Made Easy, the podcast that helps you navigate the ever-changing landscape of mobile marketing. I'm Kim Stewart, and in today's episode, we're going to talk about our latest SlideShare presentation, Real Estate Agent Marketing Tools. If you would like to view the slides, they can be found directly linked from our podcast page on dominoresearch.com. Today's podcast is all about location, location, location. Real estate agent marketing tools. As I mentioned previously, today's slides can be found on the podcast page at dominoresearch.com. And the video version of this podcast is also available on our Domino Research YouTube channel. Real Estate Agent Marketing Tools. What worked then and what to use now? Realtors have always used marketing tools to create a relationship with prospects and encourage them to become long-term customers and to refer other customers. We call this marketing lead generation. This specialized set of tools has not been limited to real estate brokers and agents, But over time, many of these tools have been adapted to work with those listing and selling properties. Lead generation for agents and brokers has traditionally been accomplished using costly tools that only provide decent results. One factor that has been impossible to overcome in previous marketing tools is reaching a prospect at a specific location. Lead generation methods, tried and true, Oldies but goodies, let's talk about those for a moment. Direct mail postcards. Direct mail postcards are still in use today by a large number of real estate agents. They have a decent conversion rate, but they are expensive. We did some research and discovered that direct mail postcards for the San Francisco Bay or Los Angeles metro area average about $4,200 for 10,000 postcards mailed. 10,000 postcards sound like a lot until you think about the fact that 10,000 people probably aren't buying a house at that time. Direct mail postcards also do not end up in wallets or on smartphones. They normally end up in the trash if the timing isn't right. Newspaper advertising, magazine and periodical inserts, neighborhood flyers, I don't know about you, but we still have shopping lists with refrigerator magnets on our refrigerator from various real estate brokers who dropped them off in our mailbox or on our front porch. Local TV advertising, we see realtors doing that, and of course, existing customer referrals. Existing referrals are the single most effective method of getting new clients, and we're going to talk later in this podcast about some of the ways that you can effectively use mobile wallet marketing to make it really simple for your customers to refer you to their friends and coworkers and neighbors. Changes in marketing over the years and keeping up with technology. How has that affected the real estate agent's marketing toolbox? Well, in the beginning, referrals. Somebody would buy a house or somebody would sell a house and they would tell their friends, their coworkers, their neighbors about their agent and generally give their agent maybe a list of names that they should talk to and the referrals uh, would then turn into personal contacts between the realtor and the potential new customers. So the realtor would pick up the phone give them a call, or perhaps send them something in the mail, Um, not necessarily one of the postcards. There's also a large propensity on the part of realtors to send person-specific mailing in the form of letters and flyers and stuff like that via snail mail. And then along came the internet, and that really changed things for a lot of realtors. The technology-minded, forward-thinking realtors started to learn how to do their own lead generation. Hyper-targeted landing pages, Google AdWords, email campaigns, that sort of thing. And what that does is that really brings down the cost of advertising over a period of time for real estate brokers and agents. You'll still today see a lot of agents, especially new agents, they buy lists from Experian 
or they spend a large portion of their marketing budget using Trulia or Zillow or comparable sites like that to manage their lead gen messaging. And what we see with that is while that does have a general effectiveness and a cost effectiveness, it's still not inexpensive and they are very limited as to how long and how often they can market to those leads. In essence, the names don't belong to them. The contacts don't belong to them unless they can get a response from those contacts and add them into their own targeted lists. Now, the biggest thing that's happened in probably the last two or three years in almost any kind of active, communicative, engagement marketing is going to be mobile. And that can be mobile wallet marketing, that could be apps. There are certainly no shortage of app developers who are more than happy to sell individual realtors or individual broker agencies apps for themselves or their agencies. Um, the one problem with that is distribution. Um, what we really see with realtors when they look at mobile is pretty much the same way that they looked at the internet 10 or 12 years ago, and it's kind of one of those what I like to call now what moments. And a now what moment happens when someone is confronted with a piece of new equipment or a piece of new technology or a new method of reaching out and effectively doing something and they know they want to do it. More importantly, they know they need to do it, but they're really not sure how to effectively, cost effectively, how to implement that. And, you know, one of the things that some of our agents say to us is, well, you know, we see everybody's got a mobile phone. Everybody uses their mobile phone. We we know we need to be on mobile, but it's really confusing because, you know, do we do an app? Do we do advertising? Do we do our Google AdWords to mobile? What 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 do we do? How do we manage this? And so those really that that's the now what moments and how you choose to overcome that and go forward, it, it really makes a big difference in how your business is going to move over the short term and more importantly, over the mid to long term. We truly believe that the most powerful tool there is today is the mobile phone. And mobile phones are, they're ubiquitous at this point. Um, you know, I, I say this number a lot, 182 million U.S. consumers have smartphones. We're not even talking about the ones that are still carrying flip phones around or any of that. We're talking just 182 million smartphones. And, you know, what's so great about it? it it's just a phone. Well, realistically speaking, when you take a smartphone and you take an app that is designed for a smartphone that will have good distribution, and when I say good distribution, I mean if you are, if you're a single agent who has to pay for your own marketing or you're a small brokerage firm and you're doing your own marketing, paying for an app to be developed for yourself or your company is probably not the best expenditure of that money to get onto mobile and to actually get results. Um, when you see somebody like a Sephora or a Starbucks and they have an app and they have millions of people that use their app, but they still incorporate the element of Apple Passbook and sometimes Google Wallet as one of the core pieces of their app, you begin to look at it and say, in the distribution cycle of how many people can use your app economically, you're going to look at it more in the manner of going with something that is Apple Passbook compatible, possibly Google Wallet compatible, and you're going to leverage those technologies and you're going to allow Apple and Google to do your consumer support. 
you're a broker, you own an agency, you are not a technology genius and you should not have to go and hire a programmer, keep them on staff to do this work and do these updates for you all the time. Apple Passbook, here are a couple of stats. 95% um, of installed passes remain on the phone. Now, this doesn't mean that every single one of those passes is looked at every day. It simply means that when a user installs a pass, only about 5% of them are actually deleted. The other 95% either remain dormant, as in the company that issued the pass doesn't update them regularly, if at all, which, you know, this happens, there's no doubt about it, or the passes are not sending notifications regularly. Now, when you look at something like an Apple Passbook, especially on some of the larger iPhones, the 6 and the 6 Plus in particular, the retina graphics, they're super sharp. You get a lot of detail. You can put a picture of a house on a property listing and people can see that picture. It's a fabulous icebreaker. It looks really nice when somebody pulls that pass up and they see the picture. They're kind of like, oh, wow, that's a great picture. Let me check that out. The other great thing about Apple Passbook is that lock screen notifications are automatically enabled. Whether it is a location-based notification or an update that is going to be pushed to the lock screen, those things are automatically enabled. Now, a device owner can turn around and say, I don't want that, and they can turn the lock screen notification off. Some do. We're not saying they don't. Um, it allows for a big level of customization, and one of the best features specifically about the Apple Passbook integration that we really, really like and we really, really try to push is the live links on the back of the pass. Now, what happens with a live link is when you put an address or an email address or a telephone number or a URL into one of those additional fields on the back of the pass, that becomes a live link that the user can simply press the link and something happens. In the case of, say, an address, a map with driving directions will automatically pop up. If you put a URL in, they'll be taken to whatever content it is that you want them to see, whether it's a a website update or something on social media or a general contact for you. Um, same thing with the telephone and the email. As soon as they push the number, the phone dialer launches. And as soon as they press the email link, an email launches and they're sending you an email or they're looking at a map or they're calling you from the back of the pass directly. It's one step, one click, and they're doing something that you want them to do. So you sit and you look at it and you're like, okay, well, mobile wallet marketing tools, what can this really do for me and my business? Mobile wallet marketing is a very simple concept. You drop a property listing directly into a smartphone and 95% of the time it stays there. You then have the ability to send updates and location-based notifications to that smartphone as long as that pass is installed. So if you've got a property and it's kind of a hot property and a lot of people looked at it and a lot of people downloaded the pass for this property listing, you get an offer on it, you can immediately notify all of the potential buyers and if any of their agents have the pass in their phone, everybody gets notified all at once. You don't have to chase them down on the phone and leave voicemails. You don't have to send emails and wait for them to open them. It's an instant, immediate method of communication. And the other really fantastic thing that we're going to talk about a little bit later is how much easier it makes for you to get referrals from your current and existing customers. It's so simple. Um, the system offers easy setup. It's five minutes or less to actually build and distribute a property listing or a realtor business card. You get stats. You can see how many people have opened each one of your passes um, on a daily basis, how many people kept it, how many people deleted it, how many people were using 
um, iPhone versus Google Wallet. You can message in real time based on either context, which is where we talk about things like the offer or location. If you have people who are at a specific location, like say an open house that you're running and you have an alternate property that you want them to consider as well, you can set it up so that you message them at the open house with the alternate property. So if this is like a Sunday afternoon and they're out driving around from property to property, you can get more of their attention and more of their time contextually with the use of the installed listings. And again, real-time communication. Two-click shares. This is where I'm going with the referrals. Now, Apple Passbook in particular offers the ability for any user to share a pass with any other Apple iPhone user. They can do that a couple of different ways. They can email, they can send a text, they can do an airdrop if two people are standing right next to each other. This is as simple as pushing the share button on the back of the pass. And this is the same share button that Apple uses for everything. So it is instantly and immediately recognizable to anybody looking at a pass. Mobile tools mean better engagement. Real-time communication with prospects, location-based, contextually based. There is no other way to get this other than to spend the money to develop your own app. Now, if you are an agent and you work with like a Keller Williams corporate or a Century 21 corporate, it's highly likely that corporate has an app. But the amount of traction and the amount of leads that you actually get from that app they're going to be pretty minimal because that's a lot of people sharing one corporate app. What this does is this allows you or your agency or you and another group of agents to get direct links to these prospects. They belong to you. They don't belong to Experian. They don't belong to Trulia. They don't belong to Zillow. And to message them in the manner and with the frequency that you find appropriate and that you find works best for you. The listings are gorgeous. The retina display is fantastic. Live links on the back. Again, simple. Five minutes to do. Um, we call it the simple steps to get results. And the simple steps are you drop the listing into the iPhone. You send the updates as needed. You provide timely and contextual information to the installed passes, which are a direct line of communication to interested people. When a property goes off the market, you can convert it to a similar property or you can convert it to a business card for yourself or your agency. Don't forget referrals, super, super easy referrals. There is no easier way for one person to give your contact information to someone else in a manner that they can instantly take action on with just like two clicks. Admin, simple, five minutes or less. The step-by-step -step instructions, choose the property, create a new listing from a template, you need a headline, four lines of text on the front, Backfields, that's where those live links are located. You can have as many or as few as you like. We are suggesting, you know, three to five is really good. That way you've got your phone number, you've got your online contact information, your property listing, maybe some content. It's up to you. There is no rule. There's no hard and fast. You have to do this. You have to do that. Experiment a little bit and see where your best results come from, but make it really easy for people to contact you using those back fields. Geofencing and iBeacon notifications. These take no time flat to set up and they're quick, they're easy. You hit the distribute button. It's less than five minutes. It takes even less time than that to update an existing pass. How do you distribute these to potential buyers, potential sellers, etc.? You can use search, social. Those links can go directly to dropping in property listing passes. You can list them on your own website. 
You can put the links in your email blasts that you send out. You can put the links in your SMS blasts that you're sending out. Remember, the goal here is to get the user to click on the pass and put it in their iPhone. QR code scan. This is another fantastic thing. Apple Passbook has a QR code scanner integrated into the app already. All they have to do is open up Passbook, point at the QR code, and in it goes. This is so super fantastic and easy for point of sale materials in newspaper ads, at open houses, on all of those uh, property listing flyers that are taped up on the outside windows of the offices so that street traffic walking by sees it. So simple, easy to do. You can do it with the link, you can do it with the QR code. Referrals. I already talked about how easy it is for referrals to share with two clicks and the people they're sharing with to contact you with two clicks. It does not get any easier to share referrals. Referrals can share these not just with other people's iPhones. They could share a pass on their Twitter, on their Facebook, on their Pinterest pages, in an email. It's so easy. If you want more information and you want to talk to us, you want us to get you a demo, get you set up with an account, it's really easy. Realtor.AtlasRewards.net. Now, that's the fastest way to get more information. Fill out the form, give us your best email address, and we'll get back to you really, really quickly with all the information that you need, some more tips and tricks for how it pertains specifically to your market. Um, you know, obviously, if you are doing commercial properties, that's going to be a little bit different than residential. Both of those are a little bit different than really high-end residential. Uh, if you do rental properties or timeshare, stuff like that, we have got a great set of sort of best practices and tips and tricks geared towards every segment of the market. So we'll be more than happy to give you all the information, go through the system with you, you name it. Anyway, I'm Kim Stewart. This has been Location, 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 Real Estate Agent Marketing Tools Using Mobile Wallet Marketing. Thanks.